Hey everybody. So we're going to get the Raspberry Pi hooked up to our AnyCubic Viper here and get a print going remotely. Now, I already tried this once to work out some of the kinks. A couple of things I'm not particularly a fan of, and I'll cover those. Uh, for one, the cable for the USB connection is here. Which is right close to where the SD card is uh, set up. So if you're going to be interacting with the SD card a lot, uh, you know this USB cable is going to be in the way if you want to keep it keep it here. So I kind of thought about what's the best way to run this cable. I ran sort of just ran it here, but I might try to neaten it up in some other way. Uh, so what's our connection for the Pi? Here's what we got. Here's our Pi, of course. That's the power cable into the USB-C. Uh, we have the printer, and this other USB is my cable. And so I'm probably going to, one of the things I think I'm going to try to print with this is just a stand to stand this up on edge. Something interesting that I think this is common across all Pi setups, but um, could be particular to my experience. So I'm using this blue cable, which came with the Viper, and it is plugged in to the Raspberry Pi. And so if I boot the printer first, the Pi will not boot. Don't know why. It won't even spin the fan which tells me nothing. I actually plugged a monitor, keyboard, everything into this just to take a look. I tried it a couple different ways. I tried different USB ports. Doesn't matter. If the printer is on first, the Pi will not boot. Now, what is that about? I'm not positive. Now, the camera's plugged in, and the camera seems to have no problem. I did read something where somebody said printers, printers may push power through the USB, which can sometimes make Raspberry Pis act weird. So I don't know if it's trying to, I don't know, backfeed power through the USB, and for whatever reason that's not agreeing with the Pi. But in any event, that's the uh, that's the condition. So if that happens, you don't. Something's not wrong necessarily. It is just that the power off the printer first, power the Pi on, and then power the printer, and you'll have no problem. Uh, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So uh, here's the Pi. Printer and camera are connected and power. So uh, the Pi has its own on-off switch, which I will flip. Off we go. Now that that is on its way up, what I will do is hit the... You can hear my printer is booted up, and at this point, everything should be happy. I'm going to make sure there's nothing to interrupt printing and things, and I'm going to go to the Pi interface and copy a file, maybe take a look at some of the plugins we installed, and get a print started. Here we are at the OctoPrint main screen. I've logged in through the browser interface on my computer here, and um, you can see a few different things. So one of these, uh, the first panel you have here is the info panel that has some information about your machine. Um, and this is doing some firmware checks. I'm just going to minimize that. Here's the connection of my printer. I have it doing auto connect on a server start. So you don't have to come in here and click connect every time. Uh, that's okay. And that's telling me state is operational and everything's okay. Here's a uh, file that I've loaded. This is the SD card. These are all the files that are on my SD card currently. Um, and you can see those. You can create a folder. You can do things to them. Uh, refresh the file list, that sort of thing. Uh, here you can do some preheating at the temperature panel here. Uh, you can pick ALS, uh, ABS or PLA. Uh, those, are, those are the default targets from printer. Actually, I think the printer has them set at 190, but um, I think that's okay. And you can see my camera here. Uh, 
this is the my camera is definitely in a suboptimal sort of way, but I'm using the keyboard to move the build plate right now. That's kind of cool. Uh, this is the built-in G-Code viewer. I don't have anything printing right now, so we can't see it. I also have pretty G-Code plugin uh, loaded here, which we would see something here too if we had anything loaded. Octolapse um, shows up in the top nav bar here but also has its own panel uh, and this is the built-in time lapse let's uh, let's grab some of the models I'm gonna print this Apple TV hanging mount which I think is pretty cool um, I might need this for work and here is a Raspberry Pi stand I might want to stand my Pi up on end like this so I'm also gonna print these Ender 3 cable management um, parts. I believe the Ender 3 V rail system is the same dimension as the Viper uh, rail system, so I'll print these at 100%. We'll figure that out. I've already pulled all of this into Cura. Make sure the settings are the way I want them. I'm going to pop over to Octoprint. I'm going to say upload a file, go to my desktop, grab my parts.g code, open them. Boom, and they showed up. I'm going to load them. Parts.gcode is here. That looks pretty cool. And let's preheat. While that's preheating, let's take a look at pretty G code. We can see all our parts here. Uh, this is cool because it's going to show us all of what, uh, what the printer is going to print. All of that is cool. Let's see how our temp's doing. Yeah, our temp's coming up. Okay. Uh, I don't have my printer properly set up for Octolapse, and that's okay because I'm not doing a time lapse. So what I did was I went into Octolapse. I just disabled it for now, and I should be able to just hit print. There we go. All right. Well, I'm gonna let this. Uh, I'm gonna let this rip and and uh, keep an eye on this. Keep hope this all prints successfully, and uh, we'll check back in in five hours. Here are the parts. They came out really great, actually, just as I had hoped. And that was all um, launched by Octoprint. One interesting thing with Octoprint and the Viper. When you initiate a print from Octoprint, the screen just looks like this. You don't get any status um, on the printer itself. You have to check Octoprint for the status of your print. As far as, you know, sort of time, percentage done. Uh, the temperature, of course, does change. But other than that, other than that, um, it just looks like that. So, but anyway, thought it was pretty cool to use that. And I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed that brief tutorial on just getting a basic print running from Octoprint. I'm going to start doing a deeper dive into some of the plugins and things that I've installed, and we'll check those out together and sort of learn some of the quirks as we go. Thanks for watching.